For some, a phobia of heights can be an almost paralyzing experience. Simply standing too close to an edge can create intense fear. Floor 10. This is a virtual reality simulator, designed not only to induce a fear of heights, but also to help conquer it. The view from here is amazing, isn't it? So I'm now right up at the top of the building and I can see the roof just above me, uh, and it is very high up. How is your anxiety now? I still feel okay. Quite high up, to be this close to the edge with very little barrier, but okay. What I'd like you to do is pick eight apples. To reach them, use the platform. You push the lever forwards and it'll take you out. So let's give it a go. Okay, I'm moving forward. Very good. Right, that's one. I need to get eight, right? Yeah. Where shall I put them? Well, you can throw it. Oh, okay. Well, that's fun. This one's quite far away. I've got to lean quite far over to get this one. I don't think I'd normally do this in real life. No, I would not have leant that far forward if this were real. I can tell you that. Take the headphones off. So that was quite challenging in some areas. I mean, I'm not scared of heights myself, but you do get a sense of feeling like you are in this space. It is recreated quite well. And the sense of movement as well. In the lift, you feel like you're moving up, you feel like you're moving out, and they contribute to making you feel a little bit uneasy, a little bit uncertain on your feet. But what will it evoke in someone with a real phobia? Yeah. This is Liz, and her fear of heights was starting to take over her life. If I had to be in a situation where I was confronted with height, I'd feel very, very tense, um, sort of jumpy. And certain height situations made me feel not just that I might fall over the edge, um, but that I actually might voluntarily go over the edge, which is a really, really unnerving feeling. I didn't trust myself with heights anymore. Um, I felt uh, anxious as to how I might react. You're doing marvellously. Would you like to try the next floor up? Yes. Even though you're, you know it's not a real world, you do feel the symptoms of fear that you would do, but you're braver because you know that you're safe. Liz has completed this course and to her amazement, it's had a powerful effect. How did this feel, Liz, when you were doing it for the first time? I was very nervous. Um, my hands were sweating on a few of the occasions, which is not normal for me. Um, and I felt very jumpy at any sort of sound change. I mean, I could do it, but I didn't feel very stable. But now I feel hugely more confident. I thought that it, it had perhaps changed, but I wasn't really sure to what extent until I tried it. So after that session, I did go out and put myself in some positions where you are sort of facing heights. And I was really, really surprised at how differently I felt about it. So exposure therapy is when a person is exposed to the situation that they're fearful of, that they might be avoiding. Dr. Nahara Krauss is a clinical psychologist who's been treating mental health problems for more than 20 years. Exposure therapy is something that is seen as helping people learn to manage their automatic fear response, their physiological response, and become desensitized to that response. It doesn't feel threatening and so I don't feel anxious and I feel comfortable with it. Do you, would you actually go as far to say you feel comfortable? Yes, I would which is quite remarkable, really. There's something beautiful about VR in the fact that uh, people know it's not real and they can try things that they've not done before, not done for a long time, yet the mind and body does behave as if it's in the real world. And what they're basically doing, like Liz, is learning a new memory, in her instance, about safety around heights. And that memory of safety is replacing and helping diminish the fear memory that she had. One in four of us will have some sort of mental health problem this year. And with the number of people seeking treatment rising, a new approach could be needed. Specific phobias are one thing. 
But what about anxiety or depression? These are more complex conditions, more nuanced. Can a machine ever really replace a human when it comes to treating these? Mel Slater certainly hopes so. His latest programme simulates a therapist's office and uses a popular psychological technique called body swapping. So this is a kind of uh, virtual self-help therapy where you can talk to yourself as if you were a friend because we know we're better at solving friends' problems than we are our own problems. So it gives you a way to get a better perspective on your own issues. This is Emily, who has severe social anxiety. I have this constant voice in my head telling me that I'm not good enough and people will sort of notice and judge me for that. Daily interactions like ordering a coffee or taking a book out of the library. I get really hot and quite flushed and flustered. My breathing gets quicker and then you're just suddenly, everything spills over. Can this treatment help? To begin, Emily must explain her problem to a virtual therapist. I experience a lot of anxiety at university, um, especially social anxiety, which affects me in lectures. Now she swaps chairs in the virtual reality and gets to hear her avatar relay her problem. I experience a lot of anxiety at university, um, especially social anxiety, which affects me in lectures um, and going out, sporting events. Now it's her job as a therapist to counsel herself. Have you thought of using any methods to try to calm yourself down, focusing on your breathing, um, trying to find the cause of your anxiety and managing your thoughts? And she's now back in her own body, ready to hear that advice. Have you thought of using any methods to try to calm yourself down, focusing on your breathing, um, trying to find the cause of your anxiety and managing your thoughts? I think it's quite difficult when you are experiencing a moment of heightened anxiety to remember necessarily some of the techniques that you've been taught. I think knowing that it was me maybe made it less helpful because it was still kind of my voice, um, but it's, I guess, reassuring to like a bit of a self mantra, to something that you're saying to somebody else could actually be useful and you could take it on board. Body swapping is something that can be used again as a, a, a tool that accompanies uh, your treatment. However, it assumes that a person has first of all got the ability to put themselves in someone else's position, which isn't always very easy for people. The second assumption is that people have the verbal ability to be able to express uh, something ob objectively, which again for some people isn't very easy. So I would have concerns about somebody doing it on their own. So we know there's a crisis of mental health in the UK and other countries. We know that people often have to wait a long time for appointments where issues that are fairly mild over time can become much, much worse and maybe this can be a stopgap before they see the real therapist. So it's very early days, we, we don't really know yet, but these are the kind of ideas that we're investigating right now. And you've had conventional talking therapy. How does this compare? Can it compare? Um, I think it's difficult to compare it because there's somebody physically in front of you who's trained to offer advice, whereas if you're talking to yourself, you know, I'm not a trained mental health professional, I don't know maybe the best techniques that you could use. I'm really excited, I think we can make a fun, interactive and effective treatment for people that will change uh, how mental health problems are dealt with. Some people I think are nervous, perhaps worried about therapists being replaced, but we don't see it like that. We think uh, VR can aid therapists, but more importantly aid so many more people getting the psychological advice that they need. If we're going to radically increase the provision of psychological treatments, then we're going to need technologies like VR. This therapy will now be trialled on a hundred people. The aim is to get it into clinics and even people's homes. My, my son asked me, I'd like to go and do Go Ape. Um, he has mentioned it before. I have managed to move the conversation on and we've not done it. Um, I wouldn't even have really liked to see him doing it. Um, but I thought, okay, I've done this course. I'm going to try it. And we did it. And it was amazing. 
you're crossing sort of uh, bridges where there's great gaps in the steps or walking across a sort of tightrope walk and I was able to look down it's liberating I feel it's given me a lot of confidence as well actually um, because part of this uh, reason to do this course as well as Conquer My Fear was I was I feel like it's good to show um, to show my son that uh, a fear that you already have or something that you're frightened of you can get over if you if you really put your mind to it